Hi, how are you? My name is Robert, and from now on I thank you for watching this video, in which I am going to explain the operating menus of the Fluke PTI 120 Pocket Thermal Imager. But before continuing, I would like to ask you not to forget to drop a like if you find this video interesting, in that way, I will program new videos on this topic. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and activate the notification bell. In a previous video, I provided an overview of the Fluke PTI 120 Pocket Infrared Camera. Now is the time to explain the menus of this handy thermal imager. Sometimes we think that using measuring instruments for maintenance is complicated, but as we are going to see, the menus of this thermal imager are very easy to use. To turn on the camera, we simply press the green power button for a couple of seconds and after about 10 seconds the camera will be operational. On the screen you will see different elements. On the right you will see a color bar that represents the temperature scale with the colors of the currently selected palette. The highest and lowest temperature values that the camera is detecting appear at the top and bottom. Each pixel on the screen will be assigned a color based on its temperature and the color distribution of the temperature scale, that can change, depending on the temperature of the bodies we are seeing. This is the automatic mode for adjusting the colors based on the maximum and minimum temperatures detected. A small square also appears on the temperature scale that moves over it when we move the camera. This little square is associated with the temperature measured by the central pointer. In the center of the screen is precisely the central pointer whose temperature appears in the upper central part of the screen. At the bottom of the screen is the status bar, on the left we have the battery status indicator, the date and the time. In the lower right part we have two numerical values associated with the emissivity settings, presented by the letter E, and on the other hand we also have the reflected background temperature, represented by the letters BG. Also in the lower left corner, the Wi-Fi connection status indicator may appear, depending on whether or not the Wi-Fi connectivity has been activated. It is also possible to see two dynamic pointers that move freely throughout the screen, and two numerical values called max and min, these pointers continuously search and display the highest and lowest temperature value on the thermographic image, and coincide with the extreme values that appear on the temperature scale to the right. Finally, the Fluke logo appears in the upper left corner. To activate the camera menu, we simply touch the display, and this will bring up a top bar with six icons. From left to right, we have first the icon for accessing the camera's memory, then the icon for the fusion of the infrared image with the visible image, then the icon for selecting the color palette, on its right the icon for the activation of markers and items that may appear on the display, then the backlight and flashlight icon, and finally the icon for the configuration of different parameters of the camera. Now, let's go into each of these menus. Memory menu. When entering this menu we can see the thumbnails of the images that we have captured. By moving the finger down on the screen we can see the images that are hidden below. The images are organized into groups, based on the date they were taken. By pressing the icon with the three dots that appears in the upper right corner, we get access to three options, the first one allows us to add a text note to a group of images. That note can be used later, for example in the report. The second option allows us to delete some images. on the image again, a little flag will appear at the top that, if activated, will allow us to mark the thermography for future actions. The icon of a QR code also appears, which when selected will activate the visual camera in order to read and associate the information of a QR code with the thermographic image. Finally, on the right, an icon with three dots appears that, when pressed, 
offers us the options of adding a written note to the thermography. To return to the main menu we simply click on the image until the left arrow appears, click on it and then click on the X. The second option on the main menu allows us to adjust the IR fusion function. Thanks to this option we can make the infrared image more or less transparent to allow the visual image to be seen behind it. We simply move the touch cursor from left to right and thus we can adjust the transparency of the infrared image from 0 to 100. With the cursor on the left the image is totally visual, and on the far right it is totally infrared. In any case, when the IS2 format is used, the infrared and visual image are always saved together, so that with Smart View or Fluke Connect software we can regulate this transparency also during the creation of the report. The third option on the main menu allows us to choose one of the six available color palettes. The gray palette, the iron palette, the high contrast palette, the amber palette, the hot metal palette and finally the blue-red palette. To select the palette we simply click on it. To exit this menu, we touch on an unused area of the screen or press the image capture button. The fourth menu is the one that allows us to select the markers and elements that we want to appear on the screen. Thus we can activate or deactivate the dynamic markers for the highest and lowest temperature, the central temperature marker, the sidebar of the temperature scale and finally the status bar that appears at the bottom of the screen. To exit this menu, press the image capture button. The fifth icon allows us to activate the LED flashlight that incorporates the camera in its front part, we can also change here the illumination of the screen. Press the image capture button again to exit this option.